everybody. Welcome to another Toy Guys Talking. Very happy to have on with me, Obi. Obi, how are you doing today? Pretty good, Michael. How are you? That's Ac- it for tonight. Good night, everybody. <laughs> you, you, you did it before I could do it. <laughs> I beat you. <laughs> that joke never gets old. I, and, I love it. <laughs> and I just wanted to thank you again for the awesome t-shirt, the Snake Eyes awesome. card art t-shirt, and the incredible letter. Um, yeah, that was that was very boom right here. I was like it, an arrow, know, right? I, I certainly didn't imagine that you would do a video for it. I thought for sure maybe just a quick thank you on Instagram and but oh, thank you so much for the video. It, was, it meant a lot. Appreciate really. appreciate it. So uh, you're a huge Star Wars fan, I take it. Uh, yeah, a little bit. Uh, um, <laughs> something, yeah, a little bit. something. The Force, <laughs> Spider said. Something yeah. tells me. <laughs> uh, for the for the folks watching along on YouTube, uh, we're seeing yeah. uh, Han Solo frozen in carbonite in behind you. So Absolutely. share with us the story behind what that is. That was a that was a gift from my wife a couple of Christmases ago. Uh, oh. Of course, I wanted the life size one, but I mean, come on, seven thousand dollars a bit much. Wouldn't it so, be more uh, if Harrison Ford is actually in there? Oh, uh, you know what? <laughs> it's got to I mean, be at least eight thousand. <laughs> that would be great, wouldn't it? No, I don't think I'd want him frozen in carbonite, though. I mean, I'd want him like walking around the house mm-hmm. being all grumpy and whatnot. Hey, That'd be kind of when's cool. dinner? I'm hungry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got right. anything to eat in here? <laughs> Harrison, please yeah. open a window if you're going to light up. Uh... <laughs> yeah, don't tell me what to do, kid. <laughs> rumble, crumble. But yeah, so my wife got me this. I put the, and I was, I had no idea where I was going to put it. Fit perfect on the door. Lit it up. I and, love it. Uh, yeah, I love that piece. It's nice. Well, lights are such an important part to that particular piece of art. Uh, usually, we well, we see it not lit up, right? Whether it's in figure form or some of the other right. recreations of it, or a rug. But it's the lights that really, because because the actual thing in the movie has a couple of lights on the side uh-huh. too, so it's the lights that really um, kind of add the authenticity to it. Plus, the actual photograph is dramatic lighting on it, you know, the shadowing oh. and stuff. So, I think it really uh, probably a great idea for anyone who has something like that to just surround it with some uh, lights to really punch it up a bit. Yeah, it definitely works. I think absolutely. So last week I talked to your good buddy down the road, Jared Retro Toy Pile. Oh yeah. And yeah, I was surprised like, uh, when he said, yeah, I'm, I'm best friends with Obi down the road. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we go way back. We, we go way back. We are, uh, we are brothers in arms. <laughs> oh, that is so awesome. And I told him, I literally opened a package from Obi today. No kidding. Like yeah. <laughs> this morning, I opened it, did the video, and, and I'm talking to one of his best friends yeah. down the road. So he's an awesome guy. And I'm, I'm glad oh. he... You know, he mentioned your friendship because I was like, well, I got to get Obi on here for sure. Oh, uh, yeah. So are you, yeah. uh, do you go all the way back with Star Wars? Did you see any of the movies in the theater? Uh, funny you should say, um, I'm, I'm almost 50. I hate to throw that out there, but I'm Oh, that's 50. awesome, man. I This this whole thing, I say a lot of things yeah. on my channel about, come on, guys, we got to look at things from a different perspective. Yeah. This whole thing of, oh, no, I'm getting older. Oh, yes, I, I made it. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> Exactly. I'm growing older, but not up. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's, fa- it's fine. It's just a number. Yeah, man. But uh, Star Wars was actually my first movie in the theater oh. when I was seven years old. You're so and lucky. Mine was, was Lady and the Tramp. Oh, well, it's almost the same movie, really, when you think about it. It's true. It's evil, evil, dark lord and resistance. Right. Rebe- <laughs> Siamese cats will like stormtroopers. You know? It's true. <laughs> <laughs> Lovable scoundrel, yeah, <laughs> hairy, <laughs> hairy sidekick. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's almost the same. Yeah. But yeah, that was the first movie I ever saw in the theater, and it blew me away. The first and one. I haven't been the same since. Star Wars, nineteen seventy-seven. Oh, yeah. Before, before it was even a New Hope. It was, do, oh. do you remember any of the crowd reactions? Uh no, not really. I was too focused. Mm-hmm. You know? was, oh. And you saw it one? <clears throat> did you see it one time in the theater, or did you? Did you go back for multiple viewings? Uh, I saw it once in the theater and twice at the drive-in. Oh, in the drive-in, that would have been wild. Because you're in your own, like, cockpit of your fal- Oh, yeah. yeah. Got my jammies. Oh, that, that Death Star trench run. It's like, who didn't grab their steering wheel? Like, Red 5, this is good. <laughs> of course. Oh, it was great. It was great. And the, and yeah. the toys? Did oh, you the get... To- well, I, I didn't get the early bird. 
uh, I did get my first Star Wars toy was the Landspeeder, believe it or not, uh, which I still have. I still have all my vintage uh, oh, Star Wars. Awesome. From when I was a kid. Uh, and most of them are in really, really good shape. I took good care of my stuff. But uh, yeah, so the Lance, the Lance Beater needs a little work. <laughs> but, but that was my first. And then uh, Han Solo, small head Han Solo was my first figure. Mm. And, and then it was off to the races from there. So then Empire, same thing? Well, Empire was then and still is my favorite movie yeah. of all time. Yeah. yeah. It's incredible. It's I always go back to it as my favorite Star Wars movie, as hard as it is to pick one, because the original trilogy is so interconnected. I just kind of look at that as as Lord of the Rings, right? How do you pick yeah, one long movie? Absolutely. One, yeah, but but Empire is definitely a, I think the one most people can credit as that's the one that told people, hey, this thing is this thing's here to stay. Like in oh, yeah. in a hundred years, people sure. will care because of this movie. Oh yeah. And I guess maybe it's a testament to how good Empire was that. They can make some movies that aren't that special, and people still love Star Wars. <laughs> it's goodwill. Don't, don't tell George that. <laughs> uh, I heard from somebody, um, someone I think wrote on the Facebook page, that George Lucas um, consulted. Uh, they consulted George Lucas uh, for Rise of Skywalker because they they wanted to try to get some authentic Georgeness in it, and I can just imagine what that probably would have been a phone call because George is busy digging yeah. that hole for his museum. Um, <laughs> I'm digging. Uh, so I could yeah. just imagine Tired. that. <laughs> bring me some, bring me some soda. <laughs> I can just imagine oh, answering the, the phone <laughs> and they say, George, we'd, we'd like to set up a, a meeting to get your input on the, on the new story. And, and George is thinking you threw my treatments out. <laughs> so, <laughs> So George's only response to these people looking for advice is faster, more intense, boop, hang up. <laughs> and you'll see at the end of Rise of Skywalker story by George Lucas. George Lucas. <laughs> yeah, of course. Of course. Well, that phone call would probably be better than what they had thought of anyway. So it really doesn't make any difference. <laughs> it's, it, well, it's bizarre that they just kind of said we're going our own way and then... It's, it really does yeah. seem like tail between the legs and Uncle George, <laughs> you got any yeah. advice? I, what does the man possibly have to say? I mean, it's like, well, you want me to fix your mess? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's like those uh, deep, have you seen those deep fake videos? Yes. With George Lucas? Uh, not the ones with terrible. George, with some of the other guys. Oh, there's a bunch with George Lucas. His reaction to the, uh, the Rise of Skywalker trailer. Oh. I've watched that like six times. It's so funny. Those are amazing. So funny. He's, he's an entertaining guy to watch stuff like that with because, you know, I, usually the heart is in the right place. It's it's usually oh, yeah. like well-intended. We all love Uncle George. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's not, oh, of course. It's not malicious. And uh, oh, no. yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what else he has to do, if anything. I mean, if anyone's earned his retirement, it's him. But uh, oh, yeah. without know, a doubt, maybe maybe uh, we'll get the completion of the Strange Magic trilogy someday. Working on Strange Magic. <laughs> <laughs> down for willow 2 at this point oh you know? who doesn't want that oh. it's amazing we never got a willow 2 and that that's i think a really um that's a sleeper hit right there i think if that were to right. come out a lot of people would be like well, of course why not yeah because i don't remember that doing well in the theaters but uh Hanked, I think. on rental and on hbo back in the day i remember people loving that it's one of the best movies like all across the board Visually, yep. music, action, story, feel good. Um, the toys maybe weren't the best, um, but just yeah. such an amazing movie all across the board, except bombed. And yeah. just it was a uh, fan fantasy wasn't very profitable at the time. It wasn't until Lord of the Rings came in, which is a shame, really, because those, those are great movies. Yeah, that, that that genre of movies is excellent. I like that a lot. And you never know, maybe Willow helped Lord of the Rings because enough people watched Maybe. willow on home video over the years that there's a ripple effect of hey this is great what why did this bomb yeah there's movies like willow uh dragon slayer from 1980 that was i love that movie right. the effects in that are, they still hold up pretty well yeah i saw um excalibur not too long ago and that, that's another that great one that's yep. that's kind of a more laid back um not sure. that heavy on the effects and magic but just that setting of that kind of kind of he-man setting you know that swords and right. sorcery type of thing right. that's, that's really up my alley 
Um, so in the uh, 80s growing up, Star Wars was your big toy line? Uh, until 82 when G.I. Joe hit. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> right. Um, but then I, I was... Well, when G.I. Joe hit, the, there weren't enough bad guys to play like a big war type of thing. So I was still a lot of Star Wars and... G.I. Joe was taking a backseat till the line expanded 83, 84. And then it was, I was playing a lot of G.I. Joe. Uh, but I was, I was kind of splitting my time up. It's funny because I was actually just having this conversation with my wife recently. And I, I was Let me just that say, I, she is a keeper. I mean, you've already figured that out, but oh, she's giving you it. Han Solo and Carbonite. She's talking to you about G.I. G. Joe. She's a keeper. Beautiful. It's unbelievable. <laughs> it's great when you when you find somebody that like uh, will not only put up with your hobby, but uh, you know, kind of push you in the right direction. Yeah, you know what I mean. Passionate about it. They yeah. respect your passion. You know, it's my, excellent. My wife is a, was a huge Star Wars fan, and that that was amazing. Like when we first met, you love Star Wars, and she might have loved it more than me. Like she she had been into it longer than I had, and she fell out of love with uh, with it because of the new movies. And it really meant a lot to me watching her passion for it get reignited thanks to Mandalorian. So, sure. oof, yeah, that's how powerful that show is. That's what oh, George yeah. should say. You already did it. It's called Mandalorian. <laughs> Do that. This is the yeah. way. <laughs> Do it again. <laughs> Do it again. <laughs> Do it again. Faster, more intense. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so I was telling her that uh, I used to split my playtime up. Um, I used to come up with very intricate story arcs, and that's what I, I did. Arcs, like I, wow. I looked at. I, I look back now, and my childhood was basically like film school without the camera. Yeah, me too. Uh, which I didn't even realize at the time, because uh, I would, I would daydream. Well, they call it daydreaming, but I was actually scripting in my head. Yeah. <laughs> what I was going to do, what I was going to play, uh, scouting locations, and wow. <laughs> yeah, things like that. But I would split my playtime up. I would play like a couple hours of Star Wars, end on a cliffhanger, and then stop playing G.I. Joe for two hours, end on a cliffhanger, and pick up the next day wow. when I left off with them. Just like the TV and station, it, to be continued. You know, that's right. On this episode, of, you know, <laughs> it was always, oh, it, it was, you know, it, it's such a fond memory looking back at that. And to, if I were to do that today, they'd, they'd lock me up. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you do it with a camera yeah. and you get a million subscribers. <laughs> they're onto something <laughs> i know what i'm doing tomorrow now <laughs> yeah it, it's true like all, all the people uh old school collectors who are you know doing videos about vintage toys um it's it's cell phones um that have made that okay i mean for a long time that wasn't socially acceptable aren't you too old for this and now because everyone has a camera while I'm doing something with it instead of, and that's really the beautiful part about a camera being in every single cell phone. Now, instead of just your own enjoyment, you get to share it with other people, which is what the original intent was. I mean, Buzz Dixon wasn't just doing it for himself. Like, dee -dee 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 -dee, oh. this is fun. He was doing it for thousands and thousands of people. And now we get to do that as well. So I think that's just fitting. Oh yeah, ab absolutely. It's, I mean, look at the uh, GI Joe Berg. Yeah. I wow. Mean, yeah. That's, that's all he's doing. I actually watched a couple of his videos uh, this morning, and that's what he's doing. He's playing. He doesn't care that his hands are in shot while he's playing. It, it's it. That's what I like about his his channel. It's it's fun. Yeah, those guys. Um, and they have the most beautiful locations to go to. So they oh, yeah. got like they have the whole uh, gamut of environments in their little area there sure. in in. Um, South Africa, they got mountains, they got waters, they have desert. I guess they don't have snow, but uh, if you turn the exposure up enough in the desert, it's kind of the same thing. Exposure and some flour, you're good to go. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, their stuff is yeah. amazing. That was oh. one of the first videos I ever saw on YouTube, uh, toy videos, and they were just sure. taking it to the next level. And um, it's really fun just going outside with the G.I. Joe toys, especially. Uh, putting them yeah. kind of in their natural element. You would hear that, that uh, a couple times in uh, past episodes. They GI Joe, uh, I think, better than any other toy line, lends themselves best for outside play. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I, yeah, like <clears throat> Transformers. I've tried. I'll go outside sometimes for um, photography, toy photography, toy artistry, and 
I put the transformer down and I think this just doesn't feel right. This, I feel like this will create more anxiety than joy. <laughs> like, what are you doing? G1 jazz on the road. <laughs> like, uh, uh. Oh. but, uh, yeah. but a, a water moccasin in the river is like mm, sure. perfect or, or a snow cat in a snow hill. It's like, yes, that looks better than on the carpet. Oh, so absolutely. that was the rugged toy line. And the nice thing about GI Joe too, I don't think any, Joe figure or toy outside in the elements is going to, you know, cause people some, oh, what are you doing to that poor toy? Because they're rugged. They're built for that type of thing. They, they really were. They were built really, really well. Really well. I mean, like, yeah, I took care of my stuff, but I had a couple of friends, not so much. And their stuff still survived. Mm -hmm. You know, so, I mean, you had to go out of your way to really destroy something. And some people did. D did you ever, oh. uh, did you ever have any friends who stuck that little firecracker? In, no, in the no, waste. No. I didn't hang out with that. <laughs> I think there are a lot of people who, like, as as we became teenagers, it was like, well, time to get rid of childish things, and people went and blew their GI Joes up. Nope, no, nope. mine went in a box. <laughs> a That's, box and in the closet. There's so many people that wish, they just wish, you know, hindsight 2020. If only I had taken care and put them aside. Yep. But, but, you know, the really nice thing about toy collecting, vintage toy collecting, is um, you can you can have, even if you still have your original one, it might be really beat up. Like, my Serpentor is, I still have it, but he's really beat up and cracked and not in great shape. Um, I can go out and buy, like, a brand new minty Serpentor and go, wow, like, even though this isn't my actual Serpentor from my childhood, I would take my beat up one put them in like a box somewhere and use sure. the new one because you know there's a sentimental aspect to it but it's not sentimental for this particular copy of it it's for the way it looked the newness of it the freshness of it and that's a very interesting thing i can't think of very many collecting things where you know so many people can just take the actual sem sentimentality of you know maybe right. maybe if grandma gave me this one i you know i'll hang on to it it's special but for the most part, it's like, whoosh, I'll take the minty one. Thank you. Wow, that's awesome. Absolutely. Like, I, um, I'm i not sure if you follow uh, Toy Galaxy at all. And he had, he has the uh, the Boba set, the vintage Boba Fets. So he's got, I want to say, like, in the 400s of them now. Oh, wow. So I had sent him my childhood one. As soon as I sent that, I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> it's like I was like, why? Why did I do that? I was glad that he had it. I really was because I, I love his collection of that. It's fantastic. But I, I recently went out and bought another one for myself because <laughs> I was like, I have, I have I have to have a Boba Fett in my collection, you know. You don't know uh, what you've got till it's gone. <laughs> well, problem is uh, when I sent it, all my uh, vintage style was still in a box. You know, yeah, they're all in boxes. But now I've worked out some space. I'm going to be reworking uh, Club Obi Wan here. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> and I, I created a space to put my vintage uh, Star Wars, so it's going to be pretty good. I, I'm and, just looking at the wall behind you there. I love the color you've chosen for your wall. Yeah, it's actually going to be... Oh, yeah, wow, look at that. <laughs> yeah, nice. <laughs> uh, it's actually going to be blue. Oh, I'm going okay. blue, blue with white trim, uh, and i uh, got to get a couple more details in here and whatnot, but yeah. Cool. Yeah, space is always an issue. I'm... I'm not telling you anything you don't know yeah absolutely i mean if i wish that was a gift like a christmas <laughs> gift you could hand someone uh like a, a a gift card here you go what is this um you know 40 40 feet more square feet of, of an addition. <laughs> <laughs> yeah an addition onto the room like oh thank yeah. you yeah building an addition yeah i would that's what i want my wife to get me for christmas hey, we're getting an addition didn't you know no i didn't thank you that's great <laughs> yeah i'm i'm pretty much i thought i was maxed out in this room like a year ago but uh yeah i still that's part of the fun though the um yeah. of, a, of a collection room to be able to move pieces around kind of like jenga it <laughs> and uh you can keep it perpetually fresh by moving certain things out like i decided okay I can't walk into the room anymore because there's so many play sets on the room. So I decided I can move the mobile Joe mobile command center out of here. Uh, the rolling thunder can roll right out of here. Just have a little bit more space to walk around. And, uh, you know, it's, it's amazing how many things you can squeeze a little closer on a shelf and, 
add a couple more things here and there, uh, especially oh. if it's special to you. Like I can look in the room and go, okay, it's full. It's totally full. But then yeah, someone, someone yeah. gifts me a, a, a Chris star, a Christ star figure. You better oh, believe yeah. I'm going to find space for that in 20 seconds. It's like, whoosh, whoosh, there you go. Oh. That's one I never had. Uh, I always thought that line was really cool, but I never got into them. Uh, I think I had one. It was it the Magma Men. Was that the bad guy? The I'm bad? not. I'm not sure. He, Chris yeah. Star is the only one I know of by, yeah. by they, name. They were a really cool line, but I, I just never, never really got into it. I think it's the first translucent figure I ever saw, and that would have been '82, oh, yeah. I believe. <clears throat> so. Uh, Masters of the Universe was 82, G.I. Joe was 82. I mean, even even then, the competition was pretty steep. So it's yeah. like, well, what do you want? Do you want Joe? Do you want He-Man? Kristar is cool, but, you know, with with no cartoon on the horizon, didn't see a comic on the shelves at the comic shop or in the grocery comic section as we used to have. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I remember those days. Yeah, And I sure. I believe it probably was a little on the pricey side, too. Um, compared to like a GI Joe for two bucks or something, right? right? But yeah. I re I remember so many times holding uh, a Kristar figure in my hand and just kind of playing with them in the light in the store and wow and putting it right back on the peg. <laughs> well, yeah, after a couple minutes, time to go, time to go home. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> but yeah, translucent. I mean, translucent figures are great. I mean, my my first translucent figure was Micronauts. Hmm. Uh, which that was a great line back in the day. I would love to see that come back. Yeah, but uh, isn't it back in in some form? Uh, I think I think Microman, which is uh, the Japanese version or whatever, oh, okay. is back. But they're tough to come by. Uh, but mm. I really enjoyed that that line. It really uh, opened up the imagination uh, because things were changeable. It was yeah, it was a really cool line. Yeah, you know? I remember um, like uh, IDW tried to do a crossover a couple of years ago where they put Mask and Visionaries, and I think Micronauts were in there too. And, uh, yeah, I got that uh, Revolution, I think, was in yeah. there. Rom, uh, the Space Knight was in it. Yep. Yeah, that, I think that was a little too much, too fast, just to... <laughs> It was very forced. Yeah, like just to throw everything in there. You you have to drop hints at this stuff. You you can't just say mask and micronauts and vision. You have to have like at the end of an issue a little teaser, you know, like show that us Yeah. Absolutely. Show us the spectrum mask for a second and you know don't been great. Don't give it to us right away. But uh mask is another one that a lot of kids like Chris Star wanted but didn't have because there just wasn't enough money. But do you have any mask growing up? I didn't. I, I enjoyed the show, um, and I thought the toys were really cool. Never got them because uh, I like to keep all my stuff in scale. Yeah. Figures were just too small, and I was like, oh, what a shame. I mean, I understood why it was small. I was like, yeah, yeah you're gonna have, well, you're gonna have a big rig like this, this big, and you know, put a Joe in there. And, you know, that would yeah. been great, but they weren't gonna do that. Yeah, that's the really brilliant part, I think, that Hasbro decided to make their G.I. Joe reboot line the same size as Star Wars. And, like, you know, there's no competition. I mean, as much as a person might love the Star Wars figures, uh, to look at it from the perspective of a little kid, you put a Star Wars figure next to a G.I. Joe figure, it, yeah. even the 82 figures without the swivel arm, it's like, game over, man. Like, knee, elbow yeah. bend, waist, hip, everything. Yeah. Oh, they were great. And I used to take, I don't know about you, but I used to take mine apart and make my own figures. Mm -hmm. It was, I mean, it was, it was great. It was so easy, even for a little kid. <laughs> you it, know, it was, apart. that was such a great line for encouraging kids to kind of have an engineering mindset, um, sure. break things down, see how things work instead of just yeah. use it, understand why it works the way it does. So the figures, yeah, like so many kids, um, undid that screw and mixed and matched parts and even if there was nothing wrong with the figure just what would this guy look yeah. like with with these pants and and everybody you know um you wanted to put chuckles shirt on everyone right like flint's on vacation or oh, shipwrecks on vacation you got to give them the bermuda shirt the always on vacation though so you know yeah <laughs> that's true <clears throat> and then even the the vehicles you had to put together so i remember oh, yeah. the, the first time doing that I think I was kind of horrified, like, oh, no, it's broken. Why isn't it ready oh. to play with? 
but you have fun assembling it and then you realize yeah. every time you buy a vehicle you get to put it together so you snap cool. all the parts together and then the, the stickers and it was like a model experience more than a toy experience yeah this this putting the stickers on was uh i wouldn't i don't want to say it was an ordeal but it was like i gotta get them straight gotta get them straight you know yeah <laughs> Even back then, I think I might have had OCD. I don't know. Yeah, I think it definitely, yeah. it encouraged a meticulous attention to detail. Um, especially, it wasn't like 30 seconds and you're done the stickers a lot of the time. You get a Sky Striker and you're you're going at that for maybe a half hour. Because no oh. step, no step, no step. Oh. And then the other side, no step, no step. Wings alone. Putting them on the wings alone was tedious. Yeah. Tedious. But, but worth it. Very yeah, worth it. Absolutely. What a great piece that was. I think in the in the uh, long run, uh, what were uh, some of the big Joe things that you had as a kid? Oh, well, I didn't have any of the big play sets. Um, in fact, when did I stop with the? I think the the last big vehicle I bought was the Tomahawk. Mm, Eighty six. Uh, yeah, and that's that's that was it. I was because by then I was in high school and I was starting to uh, have other interests. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, school. I was like studying. <laughs> yeah, I was like, uh, yeah, it might be time. So I put all that stuff away. But uh, no, I mean, I mean, uh, early on, I had you know, I had the Mobat and the, the Vamp, the Ram. The Ram was the first vehicle I had. Yeah. I bought that and Breaker. That was that was my first. I think mine too. And I think that's because on the box, I think Breaker was on on the Ram on the box. Yeah. So I was like, Everyone oh, well, I guess it goes with. I gotta get that. Yeah. <laughs> you know? It's funny, they tried the same technique with Battle Force 2000. You remember Battle... <laughs> They're like, well, they've got to buy this figure because he goes with this vehicle. And that was like a clean sweep pass for so many people. Like, oof. <laughs> oh, Battle Force 2000. No. No. They, they, they grow on you, I got to admit. Like, if you get them, if you can just yeah, get them and have them sit on a shelf for a year with all the other great joes yeah, yeah. I, I think they grow on you the vehicles uh, not quite yet oh might be interested in getting a vector jet for maverick because i love maverick i think he's a great figure even you know aside from battle force if he had been just released as a pilot i think he would have sure. been a cool figure he's kind of exempt from the battle forceness um avalanche too because he's a snow joe so he gets an automatic pass from me uh, but yeah, I, I think the Battle Force guys, they're still Joes, so they've grown on me. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, was it, was Dodger? Like, was a, that like a fungus. <laughs> uh, Dodger, uh, blocker, breaker, yeah. yeah. Dodger I had, he was he was a gift. Um, and, I was, and I liked him because he looked like one of the Colonial Marines. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's true. You know? And I was like, all right, I dig this. This is kind of cool. Because they didn't have aliens toys. Yeah. You know, so. Until the '90s with that uh, Kenner line. Uh... Kenner line, <clears throat> which I picked up a few of those. Yeah. I, I could... That was a real head scratcher. Like, what have you done to this thing? Yeah. Well, I was reading the uh, the Dark Horse comic at the time, so mm -hmm. I was like, oh, oh, this, yeah, they actually do work really well together. So, you know, uh, aliens and predators. So I was like, that's kind of cool. So I went that route, but uh, that was that was stuff I would buy, just put it on the shelf and forget about it you know? yeah but i guess it's it's kind of funny how a lot of people come full circle and your childhood is so creative uh and then there's those middle years where you think you're the coolest but it turns out you you know people just don't have really that um imagination for that type of stuff and plus that insecurity of like what do other people think you know at yeah. that at, well, at that age people are just so terrified of what other people will think because you're looking for outside approval instead of in internal approval um and then when you come full circle and, and you get into your uh you know wiser years you realize hey you know i had it right all all those years ago <laughs> like i've i, I had it figured out back then life isn't about you know going through the years and figuring it out and finally when you're 60 like yes i got it figured out it's about hitting that mark where you go Oh man, I had it figured out and I let it go. <laughs> exactly. I mean, I had that um, from probably like, I don't know, 86 to probably 95 when Star Wars got re released, uh, where I I really wasn't collecting. Like, uh, I picked up like the Kenner Alien Predator stuff, but 
not, I wouldn't say that was collecting. It was just picking up a piece here or there. But once when Star Wars came back out in 95, that was it. I was in. Yeah. That, just when you think I'm out, they pull me back in. That was a very special moment for me, them releasing it in the theater, because I had never seen any of them in the theater before, just on VHS on my little TV. <laughs> so the special edition, the first Star Wars movie, that really just you know supercharged my love for star wars um i didn't get too many things in those same years as you i think it's because most of the stuff on the shelves wasn't that good i mean transformers had dried up and then they were you know it was a half-hearted effort of what was out there like g2 stuff to me there's some cool stuff but most of it's half-hearted like a green grimlock and a you know, like, what is this stuff? A black sideswipe. I guess that looks cool, but these are just kind of lazy repaints. And then, you know, the G.I. Joe stuff, a lot of it was neon or space or toxic yeah. stuff. And it's like, why is this yeah. still called G.I. Joe? Like, wh- yeah, do you, do exactly. you have a ranger? Like, is there a ranger yeah. in here? They had a pretty cool seal, <laughs> no. but he doesn't really look like a seal um, no. tracker. So they had really deviated. I think everything that was still left had really deviated from the original concept. So that's why I think most people got out of collecting because it, the stuff just wasn't as cool as it used to be. Yeah, well, I think it was a combination of it not being as cool and a lot of the original people that were on board from the beginning would get, like myself, getting older. Yeah. And they just lost interest, you know. And also but. the creative minds behind it were either being shuffled off or moving on to new things too. So a new person took over for GI Joe and transformers and you got these new people who come in and go, we're going to reinvent the wheel. And, oh. uh, cause you're not going to be able to sell <clears throat> in a corporate pitch meeting. All right, here's what we're going to do. What we did in 82. Like no one wants you, to you hear think that. that. That's what they would want to do because, uh, nobody has original ideas anymore. So it's like, Oh yeah, yeah. It worked in 82. Bring it back. It's fine. Here's an idea. I think that would have worked great when GI Joe was in its waning days in the mid nineties. <clears throat> you remember tan grunt and tan oh, clutch yeah. tan Ooh. GI Joe force instead of tiger force or night Force. tan for like, don't call it tan force, but give us that tan Ram and, and a tan, yeah. um, dragon, fly and give us the 82 joe's tan like a tan rock and roll and and breaker like, or even full-on yeah desert camouflage would have been great like dusty absolutely and that would tie but into love, the whole thing. Loved, sure. yeah so yeah that, that would have been a yeah exactly like dusty that would have been a cool idea but they didn't go yeah. that route they 90s was more about the really bright colors um yeah, yeah, it wasn't yeah. really my cup of tea. G.I. Joe had always been blend in, right? It was the toy that you're supposed to hide in the grass and scare your dad with. You know, like... they do that with a neon uh, yellow out in the middle. Yeah. Oh, he's really hiding. What is he, a sniper? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's but, true. Uh... I'm, I'm looking at some of the Joes here and like, oh, there's there's the dude with a bright orange hat and a vest and bright green pants. And then there's um, there's the second deep six with a bright orange helmet, which I guess is nice if you lose them in the water. But yeah, still, you compare it to that first shelf of you know the OD green guys, and then oh you yeah, know, Ricondo and Spirit and Roadblock. Love just, Ricondo. Yeah, they all just blend in. Ricondo was one of the coolest figures from my childhood, even before he ever appeared on the cartoon, because he never really did anything yeah. on the cartoon, right? But that hat, that mustache, you knew this uh, guy. Ricondo was, he was a figure, I mean, he was a jungle trooper, but because he had tan on when when I used to play, I used him as the great-grandson of, um, oh, what the heck's his name? Uh, it'll come to me. But anyway, I'll, I'll come back, I'll circle back to that. Uh, but he looked more like a big game hunter. Yeah. You know, and, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so I, I figured, you know, I'm not going to use him in that as a jungle trooper, I'll use him as kind of like out in the plains of Africa kind of guy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was, uh, he was a great, great character. I love the hat and yeah, the mustache got to have the mustache. Yeah. The only, <clears throat> the biggest shame. Oh, and the, the gun had wrapping on it too, which oh, I think yeah. was a new thing for a Joe. Like this guy's customized his rifle to keep a better grip on it because of the heat. So those little touches there really put you in the element that, the Joe was the specialist of. Yeah, the great grandson of Alan Quartermain. That's what it was. Alan Quartermain. There you go. That's a uh-huh. good one. Yeah. 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 And 
you know, the file cards I used to use as um, kind of a uh, just a beginner's kind of thing. Like, oh, all right, I'll skim around. Oh, well, I like that on the file card. I'll use that and make my character my own, you know, but I would use some of the stuff. Yeah. I didn't always use anything. Well, well, you're doing your own headcanon even at that young an age. Absolutely. Which That's is... uh, like when I saw the cartoon and I heard Clutch's voice the first time, I was like, wait a minute. He's from New Jersey. That doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? The one that uh, the one that confused me was Blowtorch too, because Blowtorch oh, yeah. was Scottish. I'm like, wait, he's not Scottish. <laughs> what is happening here? You know, but uh, oh, Blowtorch was a great character. Oh. I, I love that figure. That the one was one. On, yeah, great. that one was one of my favorites from the early years because he was the one that stood out like that. Like, mm. if you do one guy like that, then it mm. works because he is. You know that whatever his specialty is, you better take a step back because this guy's dangerous. Like he, he's not he, afraid to be seen. Yeah, he's not shooting bullets here. He's he's the flamethrower, and it's like everybody watch out. You know, I'm going to work. Same thing with uh, sci-fi. A couple of years later, oh, really yeah. bright and garish, but he's the laser trooper. So right. kind of the same thing behind blowtorch. Like watch out, this guy's got this experimental laser. You don't know if it's going to blow up. Like right. he, he's probably turning dials and stuff on that and making sure, you know, I, I need to use this thing right or it'll blow up or cut everything yeah. in front of me, you know, yeah. Friend, yeah, he doesn't even know how to use it. Yeah. Friend or foe. So that was kind of, again, a warning, you know, he's like a pylon, yeah. be careful. Um, yeah. but then when they were doing it to guys like psych out, like why is psych out so bright? Watch yeah. out. I'm a psychiatrist. <laughs> I could do like, it. <laughs> why, why is a psychiatrist in the field? You know, in yeah. an office. Yeah, like I can, I can mess you up psychologically. <laughs> like I don't, oh, I, I don't get it. Um, and then the later neon Joes. That was just you were lucky if you got a, a camo Joe or like a dark color scheme Joe in the later years. Right. It was totally inverted, like a bizarro world. Uh, oh man, I mean, like. Uh... Was it the Arctic uh, stalker there? That I mean, the only thing he had really was the green pants and the camo hat. Yeah, all but that one with the kayak. That's a great figure. That was that, that was one of the ones where I would still go to the pegs and see, you know, what's what's our old buddy GI Joe up to these days, and I'd be really not into a lot of the things they were doing. But when I saw that kayak, I went, "Wow!" And even at that young an age, I was like, "Oh, you whippersnappers! You get a kayak with a figure back in my right? day." You were lucky yeah. if you got a gun and a backpack. Well, the Stalker only had the submachine gun, the original Stalker. Yeah. So I, they were making up for that with the kayak. Yeah, yeah. They went all out. They were like, well, we, we cheaped out on them with the uh, the first version, so give them a mask and a have gun a, and a knife. A yeah. <laughs> Which I, I just did that video recently on Stalker, and, and I had never thought about it before. Stalk, to me, was always just the guy they really cheaped out on. Like, no helmet. He's just got the beret that doesn't come off. Just one gun. And I thought... Why so cheap? Um, and I think it's because of the camo uh, color scheme. Because I take it for granted in later years, like there are so many camo Joes, what's the big deal? But for that first line, it was very simplistic paint applications except Stalker. Absolutely. So, so I think that was their their way of like, okay, we'll go all out with this paint scheme. But he's going to only come with one gun. So that's the trade-off. So now that I look at it that way, I don't think of him as the guy's got nothing. I think... The guy's got the nicest or one of the nicest paint jobs of the, that first year. Oh, for sure. His, uh, his paint deco is, is probably the best in the original line. So then now I'm wondering um, with Scarlet, because she's the other one that only came with one accessory. Uh, same deal as Stalker. I don't yeah. know. Like, is, is her paint scheme as complicated as Stalker's too? Like, she seems like she might have less plastic on her than the other Joes. Um, right. it's, it's kind of hard to tell, but, uh, now I'm wondering why is she the one that only has one accessory with her? Yeah, that's good. I mean, she had the, uh, she did have the, uh, the Chinese stars though on her, on her forearm. That's that true. was sculpted. That was, that was actually a really nice sculpt for, for that time. I thought. Actually, you know what? I think, uh, I think I know what it is. Um, it's, it's original parts. She's not using a single part from the other Joes. Like oh, all, that's, yeah, that's true. It, all, it is all new parts. Yeah, all those original 82 Joes are all sharing parts, even Stalker, other than yep. his head. And Scar Scarlet's 100% original. So, yeah. you know, looking at it that way, it's surprising she even came with an accessory. 
You know, it's like, hey, you're lucky you're getting a totally, you know, new, unique female sculpt. Which I did like that crossbow. That yeah. was kind of cool. Yeah, I like that it had that extra little part for her to hold, too. I don't know if that's yeah. what it was actually intended for, but there's that part on the top, and I, I would always, I always pose the figure as holding it that way, you know, steadying it. She was a cool character. I liked her. I liked the character. The figure, I didn't use, I had her, but I didn't use her all that much. Uh, cover girl I used more. I just I like the uh, the look of that figure more. I love the the bios, the file cards for Snake Eyes, Scarlet, and Stalker. Like all of them are are written up to be super soldiers, but those three in particular, Snake Eyes, Scarlet, and Stalker, are just like the creativity that went into that, but not going overboard. You know, like oh, yeah. they didn't write like and and they can leap tall buildings in a single bound. You know, speaking of which. Yeah. Um, it, it all sounded like if a person dedicated themselves from the age of like 18 or 16, they could actually master all of these military disciplines. Um, so, you know, it, it's incredible to have one person like that on a squad, but to have three, it's like, oh yeah, this GI Joe thing, this thing's here to stay. Oh yeah. Yeah. The file cards were actually one of my favorite things. I, I actually, uh, I had saved all those as well. I cut all those up and I saved all that. Um, How about but, the flag points? Well, except for the ones I sent in to get my figures, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, you, I, I, you, I did save those as well. Do you remember any yeah. mail-aways you got? Oh, yeah. Uh, the first Cobra Commander. The, uh, the, bat, yeah, the mask. Oh, the mask uh, one. Which, yeah, well, the, uh, yeah not, the, not the battle armor one, but the original one with the, the mask, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, that Duke, that might be it for the mail-aways for me. Oh, you uh, never got the I Surge? Did, I, I did get the Sarge, but I, I found him at a flea market. Hmm. Uh, so I got him, and I also got him with the uh, the Warthog. Oh, I love that one. That, that was, was that was maybe the one that that we'll should have come out first. Like the oh, the first one's one. fine. I mean, the it looks and... it looks like he did in wrestling, you know, with the black top <laughs> and the and the camel pants and his boot camp matches. But that Warthog Sarge with the bullets and the, oh, that, that one is pure Sarge. And the Warthog, too, is, I think, a much better vehicle than the Triple T. That, that's a wrestler I'd still, I would love to meet. Uh, I've, I've met a lot of them, but I've, I've never met him. And I, he's, he seems like a really cool guy to sit and talk to and whatnot. So, yeah. I'll be on the list. Everyone who's ever met him says he's the real deal. He's, uh, oh, yeah. He embraces uh, it. Yeah, like he's genuinely a good person, which is, it can be a little rare in, in the entertainment industry, in the wrestling industry. Um, you go to these conventions and get autographs and you always hear, you know, the person didn't even look at me, he signed the thing and he just shoved it, you know, across. And and I was so honored to not meet him, but be in the presence of this superstar. But the Sarge, every single story I hear about him, he is so personable uh, direct looks yeah. you right in the eye he's more a marine than a entertainer and sure. I, I think that's why he is the way he is to this day i mean i've been fortunate with um all the wrestlers that i have met i didn't meet them at signings uh i just met them out and about grocery and store <laughs> no not quite uh well i met roddy piper uh in no way. 07 he was filming um some sort of thing for a TV show, an Australian TV show, but it was at Venice Beach in California. And my wife and I were there. And he was doing his spiel. You know, I was like, oh, I didn't think I'd ever be this close to him doing his, like, it, it was so awesome. So they they call cut. He goes off and he's toweling down. And my wife is like, well, go, go talk to him. I said, no, he's going to beat me up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, did you just see what he was doing? And she's like, just go talk to him. So I, I very timidly went over and I was like, I was like, hey Roddy, and he looks over. And I said, can I get a quick picture with you? Now this was before cell phones. I was, I had a, like a film camera. Yeah. And he's like, goes, oh yeah, come on over. So, uh, so my wife took a picture of us, um, and I said, so no, they live part two. And <laughs> he got, got a good laugh out of that, and then he had to go back on the set. So we shook hands, and that was it. But it was, it was just really, really cool. Um. Yeah, that was probably the best one. Uh, me and Gene Okerlund was another one. Oh, awesome. What, what, a, what a gentleman that guy was. Because I had met him when he was with WCW, uh, and Nitro was coming around my neck of the woods for the first time. 
and they were doing a promo thing at some bar, him and the Nitro Girls. So I went, I met him, uh, got my picture with him and whatnot. And uh, we, we talked for a few minutes. And then when Nitro came, after the show, I happened to, they were staying at the Marriott, uh, and we went. They were all in the lobby. Well, once they're drinking, they're much more pleasant. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I got my picture with a lot of them, uh, and I went to say hi, you know, to, uh, to me and Gene. And he says, I don't remember your name, but we met about a month ago. <laughs> really? I said, yeah, yeah. He says, uh, so he turns around to the bartender. He says, barkeep, I'll have another Merlot, and my young friend here will enjoy a Samuel Adams. Oh, wow. <laughs> I, said, I said, first of all, Gene, are you buying me a beer? He said, yeah. I said, you remembered what I drank? He goes, well, yeah. <laughs> that's a gift, my friend. <laughs> wow. Oh, that's yeah, amazing. He's very, very gracious, very gracious guy. And I love that he used that voice even, like, even at the bar. That's, just, <laughs> that's how he that's just how he just just how he spoke. Probably, I, I, I thought it was awesome. Even at the McDonald's drive-through, I will have a Big Mac, <laughs> large order of French fries, and a Coke. We're out of fries. <laughs> you must be jerking my chain. <laughs> <laughs> will you stop? Oh, that was Gorilla Monsoon. <laughs> Um, oh, he's another. I love that guy. Uh, oh, I, he would have been. He would have been awesome to me too. I've learned so much of my vo- vocabulary, I think, from Gorilla Monsoon, because Gorilla's whole thing was, "Don't say anything simplistically. Make it sound oh. as complicated as possible." He takes a shot to the occipital protuberance, and uh, oh, the bread basket. <laughs> yeah, the bread. <laughs> the, it's a bread basket. Yeah, the so yeah, he was one of the best ones too. And Je- his combination with Jesse Ventura, like them oh. on commentary, come on, Gorilla, just I oh. love those guys. But uh, th- been- thanks for sharing that Piper story. Piper was one of my all-time favorites growing up. Love that guy, and uh, so many touching oh. stories I've heard about him. Um, he filmed a movie up in my area uh, a while ago, and really sweet story uh, I've shared before on the channel. He would film his shooting for the day and he'd ask, where's, where's the uh, hospital? Where's the children's hospital? Oh, that's and, awesome. and they, they were like, well, there's, there's the hospital over, you know, down the road and to the left and there's a children's wing. And he's like, okay. And he'd go there and visit the kids. Uh, that's, that's been- time off, you know, not, not go back to the hotel and, or, or party or something, but it's like, okay, I'm done this job. Now it's time to go do my other job, which doesn't pay anything, but he, he felt he owed it. Um, he felt he owed his fans everything for not just supporting him, but giving him a family. And he was always appreciative of that. So just, uh, he just seemed to always like the Sarge, take the time, uh, try to connect with people and not big time people. And I'd always, uh, I always want to remind people that uh, celebrities who make you feel like you're not on the same level as them, stay away from them. Walk yeah. away. Don't give them your 20 bucks or your, or your 50 or your $200. If they in any way, shape or form, cause I'm always talking about feel, pick the thing up, see how you feel. Don't decide beforehand. Yeah. You, it's all about feel. Hey, you might, you might, uh, you know, pick up a star ear and go, Oh, like I didn't know that was in there or you might pick it up and go junk. I don't care. But, uh, you know, if anybody, uh, including celebrities uh, make you feel like, Oh, you know, you're a bother. Like I uh, hurry up hurry. Cause I've met a few people like that. You know, I, I was oh, trying to say, hi, I'm a big fan. I appreciate your work. And they're like, yeah, hurry it up. Uh, you're going to buy something. You know what? I just stopped being a fan of you. Hey, wait a- even if yeah. I've been a fan for four, you know, for almost my entire life, I'm, I'm no longer, I can appreciate your work, but if right. I ever see you again, I'm going to walk by you. Cause that's why they always hate your heroes. Yeah. Cause it's, there's a difference between the character and the person playing the character. And it's so rare that the person playing the character is actually the character as well. So Piper. Or was, even, even better than the character sometimes. Exactly. Piper was Piper with the volume turned up. You know, he, he was, oh, yeah. he was Roddy Toombs and, um, you know, Bob Remus is Sergeant Slaughter just again, you know, with some things, um, exaggerated and turned up, but, uh, yeah, there, and, and to connect those two, I've, I've said this before on, on one of the chats, I think, uh, Roddy Piper was a very, um, 
guarded person and he wasn't very trusting of a lot, a lot of the people in his industry. And I think he only ever invited one other wrestler to his home in Portland, Oregon, into his house to meet his family. And that was Sergeant Slaughter. So, oh, that's cool. So Uncle Bob. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uncle they, Bob. Yeah. They, <laughs> that's what they call Sergeant Slaughter. Oh, it's Uncle Bob. <laughs> so I just, I love the that, two of my favorites. Was better anyway. Yeah. Wrestling was a lot better. Uh, 80s, early 90s. I I really that's when I really uh, when I first got into it and I enjoyed it the most, <clears throat> and but I do feel as though there's a resurgence going on. There's like a, a renaissance of wrestling. Um, it's been a while since I've been able to care about anything WWE Agreed. produced, and I I have liked some NXT, a lot of NXT. That's the the little kind of uh, developmental territory they've created for themselves. Sure. I, I liked NXT a lot more before they got that USA slot and they're going head to head against AEW. I, I don't think that's NXT's, you know, I don't think that's, that's really in their wheelhouse. It's, it's not their best interest to be going head to head against another company. Just be yourself. Don't be competing. Um, but I'm loving AEW and, uh, and out of nowhere. Match so far so good. What's that? Yeah. I said, I've caught a couple matches on that. So far, so good. Yeah, like everybody on it. Cody is like the, the most over face in wrestling today. He's apparently the, the spirit of the American dream has settled in his son because uh, huh. this, this kid can cut a promo like his dad now. It, it's it's spectacular. And uh, Le Champion, Chris Jericho, is better than he's ever been. Uh, oh, yeah. He is just hilarious. And um, so AEW is fantastic. And out of nowhere, this um, NWA power show on YouTube. Have you heard I about this? Um, so NWA, what's left of it, has, has been bought by Billy Corrigan, uh, or as he okay. refers to himself uh, in wrestling speak, it's William Patrick Corrigan, because he kind of, he doesn't want to be the Smashing Pumpkin Guy, guy on the show so they just refer to him as William Patrick Corrigan try to make it sound a little more formal um, but there's they have a show on YouTube it's just a free show every week called Power with three R's so it's easy to find NWA Power kind of like the old NWA Power Hour back in the day and it is 100% genuine old NWA studio show with the oh. cameras on the ground the studio audience the flags hanging from the rafters like they have recreated that old georgia championship wrestling um oh, nice. set from the from the early and mid 80s maybe 70s too but those old shows with flair and race and and oh. even steamboat back you know fighting for the u.s title those old days maybe even briscoe um it is such a throwback but with current wrestlers um, oh, that's awesome! So yeah, I've I've really been enjoying that one too. Total retro yeah, I mean, show. I lost a lot of interest uh, midway through the Attitude Era. Uh, I I used to enjoy it when there was a clear cut uh, baby face and a clear cut heel. Yeah. But the yeah you know, the whole you know I, you don't know like I, as much as I like Stone Cold Steve Austin, the whole is he a good guy? Oh, he just stunned somebody that's a good guy. You know what are you doing? You it know, was. I it, was like. Uh, it was much easier for us in Canada when that whole thing happened because things remained black and white and very clearly yeah. clearly defined. I mean, he he was cool, but Brett was still our hero. Like Brett oh, came I out Brett and he did that promo where he kind of turned heel, but only on the states. And he t and he said, "Everyone in the states can kiss my butt. Everyone around the world still has respect." So Canada, Germany, and England, yeah. and all around the world so here in canada like we wanted to cheer for steve austin because he was just so talented and and fun but if it was steve against brett like we're we're going with you know the guy waving oh, yeah. the canadian flag oh, <laughs> especially like, especially when like, steve is like giving you the finger and <laughs> telling you to go to hell i mean as much as i as much as i find that funny i'm like there's, there's little kids in the audience you know come on you know yeah. it's just, i don't know i don't yeah. know not to be a prude, but, you know. It's just well, kind of... that's that's the thing that you can't be doing. I mean, they, they can be, they can try to be as mature as they want to be, but who's your audience? And, uh, you know, as a performer, if you're standing in the ring and you've got a script either given to you or you have this idea, I'm going to say this or do this, and you look down and you see a child in the audience, you have a responsibility to not expose that child to something they, they are not ready to see yet. So 
the the swearing, the the fingers, even like the you know the zip. Um, oh yeah, you shouldn't be doing that in front of a kid, uh, and yeah. and they think it's fine, but I think in the long run it's not fine. No, no, uh, that's when that's when I really started to lose interest. Though, I I really enjoyed the uh, the clear cut good guy versus bad guy, or you know. That was that was my favorite. I I I think you should try uh, NWA Power. I think you'll. Uh, I'm definitely gonna give that a whirl. I'll definitely give that a whirl. I mean, if it has the old school feel and the look and the whole bit, I'll definitely give that a look. And I think it also has the old school kind of formula of wrestling because one of my nitpicks of AEW is when a guy does a, a triple spinning pile driver off the top rope, one, two, kick out. And then he's like, okay, fine. I'll give you a whirling triple gourd buster, you know, onto the concrete, roll you in one, two, and a kick out. Huh. Roll up. One, two, three. I'm like, oh. are you kidding me? And then in the next match, the guy pulls out a pump action shotgun and shoots the guy in the temple. One, two, and kicks out. And he takes a grenade and he puts a grenade in the guy's mouth and it blows his head off. One, two, and the guy kicks out. It kicks out. And then a small that's package. <laughs> and then he does a small package. Yeah. One, two, three. Package. So that's, uh, they do that sometimes in AEW. They don't know, like, what a finisher means. Like, boom, DDT, Jake Roberts. It's over. Right. And, and it, there's uh, no way. There's no anticipation. Will he kick out? No. When Jake hit the DDT, you knew it was over. He yeah. would even hit it and kind of sit there and then, like, slowly push the guy over. And he's yeah. not getting up. Like, you've knocked him unconscious. So NWA power, the thing I like about them too, is they're more of the old fashioned type of wrestling. When a guy hits his finish, it's pretty much over, you know, like there's, there can be some kickouts, but it's going to be one time, like one, get out of jail free, get out of a finisher free, you know, every couple of weeks, it feels like not like every week, every match. So that's another uh, thing I really appreciate. It be an hour long. Yeah. You know, that, that's what it started to seem like too, is like. Why is every match like a half hour, or forty-five minutes? Yeah, it doesn't have to be like that. Yeah, power is. What was that? Uh, what was it? SummerSlam '88 or something, where the Ultimate Warrior came down, took Honky Tonk Man out in thirty seconds, yeah. took the belt, and ran off. <laughs> I was like, "What just happened? Did I blow?" <laughs> and then put him away. Boom, gone. Yeah, that was great. Yeah, and I like that he had a couple minutes. It's kind of like a Goldberg match. He had a couple minutes to annihilate the guy. It wasn't just those three second matches that they do where, you know, a guy roll up one, two, three. Oh, you want to see a guy in a quick match. You still want to see him get annihilated, right? Spear tackle, clothesline his head off, uh, at least a minute, you know, 30 seconds or a minute. And then you feel, you feel like you got something instead of like the, the guy who lost is like, what happened? Not fair. I wasn't ready. You want the guy who lost that quick to be unconscious in the ring. Like I was ready and I got plowed over. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Better luck next time, you yeah. know. But oh uh, yeah, no that that that's when wrestling was really really good. Yeah. So uh, getting back to Star Wars, have you seen the Mandalorian? <laughs> have I seen the Mandalorian? Oh how, my god! Or should I, I ask I, how I many watched, times yeah. have you? Yeah. Well, like when the new episode comes on, I will watch the new episode. <clears throat> Upon repeated viewings, I watch it from the beginning. <laughs> mm. So I'll watch episode one, two, three. So now I've seen. I've seen them all about seven times. Isn't it amazing the replay value this show has? Ah, it's fantastic. It's Star Wars as it was meant to be. Yeah, everybody's you saying know? that. And like your, like your video the other day, it was great to see morals come back yeah. to Star Wars. I love that. And the, the scene where he's in his ship, he's about to take off, and he, you don't see his face because of the helmet, and you know what he's thinking. Yeah. When he saw that... When he saw that that little uh, that little ball taken off the stick, and you're like, ah, oh, he's gonna go back, you know. And he shuts down and goes back. It's like, oh my god, that's awesome. And they they gave him that moment of internal struggle, which a lot of stuff these days they don't allow their characters to have that struggle because they're perfect. They're perfect. They're flawless. They can't make a mistake. They don't, and they don't need help. They don't need help from anybody. And this show just feels like it was a show made 30 years ago and stuck in a vault somewhere because it is Absolutely. somehow immune to all the garbage that ruins a potentially good character. Like in that same episode, he he does the wrong thing out of habit. I mean, in, in sure. our opinion, right? He does the wrong thing out of habit and he's calling the little baby his enemy and 
spoilers, everyone. Um, <laughs> people should just have spoiler tattooed on their forehead when they're born so that they understand spoilers are coming. Hide in a hole somewhere if you don't want to be spoiled. Yeah, it's like spoiler. But I used they, to want to be spoiled back in the day. Yeah. Tell me what happened. Tell me what yeah. happened. Yeah, exactly. Like the magazines won't tell you and the shows, the t- Siskel and Ebert wouldn't spill all the beans. We'd like, watch Siskel and Ebert is... to try to get Boy. some info, right? Yeah. Right. Um, but, matter. but in that uh, like in that episode, he, he does the wrong thing and we're disappointed. And, you know, our all our hearts start to sink like, oh, is this going to be just another modern show where he's cool and and kill the cute thing and you know anything you care about must die because you care about it and and the fact that uh he has that struggle with his conscience and he changes his mind and he 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 goes and he saves the thing and but then he's rescued like he can't pull it off on his own and he's rescued by the mandalorians so that's another thing that a lot of people won't do these days like nope this this character is uber powerful you know mary sue or gary stew they don't need help so Mary Stewart. <laughs> never, that's the male version of a Mary Sue. Huh. Yeah. I'm using it. I'm going to yeah. use that. Yeah. But um, I, I'll say this too about that episode is um, yeah, I thought it was something that up until when he handed the baby over, the baby hadn't made any sound and yeah. now it's starting to cry. Yeah. You know, as it, as the, t- cause he, he rec- the baby recognized the stormtroopers as something bad. So I was like, ah, oh, this is, this is not going to end well. Yeah. But when he went back, I don't think he anticipated getting out of there in one piece. And I think he was fine with that. He just wanted to save the kid. Yeah. You know? And whether it was because the baby had saved his life, spoilers, everyone. Yeah. Uh, or that he just realized it was the right thing to do. You know, this is the way. Yeah, this is the way. You know? This is the way. So but what a great end episode. Yeah, oh. I loved it. I loved it. And uh, that's we're only at episode three at the moment. So by the time this oh. hits, maybe a couple more will have come out. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm so super impressed by this show. And I got to be careful because I was kind of satisfied. I, you know, I, I never want to use the word like uh, I hate Star Wars. I'm over Star Wars. Cancel Star Wars. I, I never thought that way. But I was satisfied with Star Wars. I felt like that road came to an end and I'll still be able to enjoy the originals, some of the old comics maybe and books, but it, you know, the road has come to an end and uh, I'm just shocked that it's, it's not over yet. Thanks to Favreau and Filoni. Uh, Filoni has got, he's, he's a younger George. I mean, he went to the school of George, Yeah. you know, so it's, it's going to be, <laughs> it'll be a fun ride. He went to the school of George. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm sure like the directors who are doing the new episodes, they call him up for advice and Dave just goes, sure. eh, faster, more intense. <laughs> and he's helping George dig. I got to go. I'm helping him dig. <laughs> <laughs> he's putting me to work. Oh, Digging man. this museum. Afro is really, I mean, he is really taking a shine, you know, to the whole thing. I mean, he played a Mandalorian on the Clone Wars. Yeah. And I think that right there, he's like, oh, yeah, I can it's, do something with this. It's such a cool tie-in with Filoni. Um, it, it all just seems to be fitting perfectly t- together. And, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what happens. Do you have a prediction about what's going to happen with the, the Yoda baby? I don't. I really, you know, because I thought I knew. And I, I just... I really don't have any ideas. I'm, I, by the end of the season, he'll take his helmet off. Mm. Uh, just in front of the baby. Oh. Because, you know, because they kept saying, you know, has your uh, helmet ever been removed? Did you ever take your helmet off? But if he takes off in front of the baby, you know, who's going to know? Just yeah, the baby. That's true. Um, do you think the Yoda baby is part of Yoda's species or maybe a clone of Yoda? I don't know. I'm thinking clone now. I'm, yeah. I'm watching the conspiracy theories online. Yeah. I, yeah. I only wish that that Yoda, the female Yoda, hadn't been in Phantom Menace. Because if they hadn't included her on the council, then Yoda's even more mysterious and special. What is this thing? Exactly. But the, the fact that they did that, they just threw in that character with no lines, no character, and then she was gone in the second movie. Um, 
it kind of feels more like, well, is there a planet of these things? Um, but I, looking at the ages, it's 50 years old. I'm thinking it's probably a clone because they were cloning the clone troopers at about the same yep. time. So it makes sense that Yoda might have been cloned. Um, but then you get into dangerous territory, like who else got cloned? Are, are they going to clone Anakin? Um, we know the Emperor is in the next Star Wars movie. Is that a clone? Like this clone thing is, it can be abused very quickly and just you know like here we're bringing everybody back and we want to see our old favorites again but not copies i mean like in the zon trilogy uh the original zon trilogy that they, was great they cloned luke because they had his hand yeah you know they had the lightsaber hand you know i was like oh that's so cool you know that's that's kind of what i think they should have done with the the pre uh the sequels i should say because yeah. that set of books was fantastic yeah. Well, we've been going for about an hour now. So uh, I, I think uh, I'll just wrap this up by asking, what's your favorite all time toy? Oh, my God. My favorite all time toy. <laughs> we asked the I tough questions question. here on to Toy Guys Talking. <laughs> oh, my God. You ambushed me. Uh, are we going past or present? Anything. Oh, boy. All right. Well, uh, past. It would be uh, it would it would be my vintage vet because that was a mail away that was the first mail away. It took forever to come in because that's when they were doing the uh, the rocket firing thing yeah. and then it didn't fire. So it t it took forever, and I didn't even care that the rocket didn't fire. But that was that was my favorite. He's probably not going to uh, watch this, but on the off chance he does or someone else sees it and can forward this to Toy Galaxy, Dan. Uh, send Obi back his Boba Fett, please. Oh. <laughs> Since Obi won't ask for it, <laughs> I, I want him to have it. Okay. I do. I haven't. Okay. Wait, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, wow, excellent. Like a total across the screen right now, or something like. Please help Obi find his Boba. Fett. Uh, but I would say now my favorite figure is uh, I would have to go because I I collect a lot of Hot Toys. Mm. Uh, hot Toys. I, yeah, I see Chewie right behind you there. Oh yeah, yeah. And yeah. Han, yeah. Oh, those they are go, great. Yeah, they go together. I would say right now it would have to be uh, Temple of Doom, Indiana Jones. From Sideshow. Oh yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, that, wow, I love that figure. <laughs> the the accessories on that one, I got that one when it first came out, and after years of just customizing my own Temple of Doom, Indy, because I love that look. And yeah. never really quite getting it right. Opening that box and seeing all the different hands and the sword and That's just the wrapping. Wow! Yeah, the actual Love cloth it. wrapping and the Shankara Love stones. It. For for someone who really likes the little fine details and accessories of Indiana Jones, they went all out with that with that figure. I show is I find they either they either kill it or they kill it. You know? <laughs> It's, it's they kill it or they murder it. Or they just murder it. Like, <laughs> stomp it into the ground. Manslaughter. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's why I pre-order my stuff and it gets released ahead of time. And I'll watch a video <laughs> to see how it turned out. I was like, oh, no, no, cancel yeah. that. You know? But I, uh, no, the, my last few have been really good. I think they've come a long way since the days of, like, those early Star Wars figures with, like, the giant, almost beasting, swollen heads. Um, the, all of the recent stuff is almost Hot Toys level. Um, maybe even better in some respects because I think with Hot Toys, the stuff looks amazing, but sometimes it's they got the really grim expressions. Like I'm very I'm a serious Hot Toys sculpt, which works great with you know with RoboCop and with Terminator, absolutely. But when I see Han Solo, I want a twinkle in his eye, and Luke Skywalker needs to have that. Maybe perk. Yeah, 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 and Luke needs yeah. to have that kind of boyish wonder, not like grim right. steeliness. So I find with the Hot Toys ones, all Star Wars figures, no matter how charming they are, are really serious. And then the Sideshow are a little more, they look more like a fun toy while still having a right. great sculpt. So, um, yeah, I, I like that about the Sideshow. They, they're still trying to keep it fun and lighthearted, not, not so dark and grim. Yeah, I sold off most of my uh, Sideshow uh, Star Wars ones. You know, I think the only one I still have left is Qui-Gon. 
Uh, but he'll be going too because I ordered the uh, the Hot Toys one. Uh, yeah, can't have two. I'll have room for two. <laughs> well, Obi, I, I want to thank you for chatting with me today. It's been a blast, Boy. and definitely, Absolutely. definitely the first of many. This has been awesome. There's so many toy awesome. lines to talk about. We didn't even touch on Transformers, so um, maybe over on Patreon we can chat about Transformers for a minute. Oh, absolutely. Awesome. So uh, for that wraps it up for this Toy Guys Talking. Everyone watching and listening out there in podcast land, thank you so much for watching or listening. Um, if you're watching and uh, you want to listen on the go, you can find this as a podcast on your favorite podcast catcher. And if you'd like to chat with Obi as well about vintage toys, you can find him on Instagram. At Obi's underscore toy box. So thanks again, Obi. Really had fun chatting with you today. And we're going to go over to the Patreon tribe for Patreon exclusive Toy Guys Keep Talking. I'm going to chat about Transformers a little bit on there and some other stuff. Uh, but for everyone else, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And Nerd Mistake.